Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Carcassonne cash-in continues, this time in a gold rush. I got a few of these games because I like Carcassonne, I like the Old West, and I thought that this would be a good mix for me. It looks like they put Jake Gyllenhaal on the cover. If you can't see it, then so be it. It might just be the designer of the game. Kind of looks like both. Uh, so what they're doing is they're bringing out a line of Carcassonne games, and they're changing a rule or two, or adding something in it. They're creating variants. They're creating an expansion and they're calling it a standalone game. Fair enough. However they choose to make their money, I'm not going to hate on. Um, this one was a little hard to play. I found that the Gold Nuggets... Um, interesting. And how you could put the tents on them and take them off. That was good. Uh, the Railroad Take a Double was interesting. Um... I also like the aspect of the towns coming off. That's probably my least favorite. At the end of the day, you know, you're drawing a tile and you're playing it. I might be carcassoned out. I might be a little bit past that. Tile laying isn't my favorite genre or mechanic or mechanism in a game. Um, at the end of the day, it's carcassoned. And I'm not going to keep... 30 of these laying around because I don't really like them that much. I mean, they're a solid game. I can bring them out as a entry-level game for people. People normally like them. There's good decisions to be made. But what I like about the original Carcassonne is the expansions. I can make it into a game just like this. I can add the Inn and Traders. It's not exactly the same, but there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. So I think I'd rather keep... I think I'd rather keep the original version and a couple of those expansions to spice it up rather than just a standalone game. That's just me. But if I was somebody who didn't game, you know, this might be something that would attract me, but this would be a little bit heavier than some of the other ones. But um, the components are good. It's Carcassonne in a box with a variant. I just don't know how many variants of Carcassonne I need. So this one I'm going to go ahead and purge, even though... It's Carcassonne, which I like, like but not love. It's got the Old West theme that I like, but this is gonna, this is not gonna have expansions. This is a variant. This is what you're gonna get. I think I'd rather stick with the original for myself. If you don't like the original or don't like the expansions or are looking for something new with Carcassonne, this would be a pretty good one to check out, especially if you like the theme and they have a whole run of them and I'm trying to review them for you. Um, but I'm going to purge this one, which is a little bit of a surprise for me. I thought of this line that I would keep this, but I think in the grand scheme of things, I don't need more Carcassonne. I think that's all it is. I'm just kind of Carcassoneed out. I'm done. And I think I'd rather buy an expansion for the original than standalone game. So maybe, you know, if these worked with the original, I might be more willing to keep it. But because it's a standalone game and doesn't work with the original, I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it and be fine getting rid of it. I wish they would have made the backs the same. Then I could incorporate this as an expansion or a standalone. And I think, not telling Z-Man Games, he's much more successful than I am in this industry, but I think that's the way I would have went. So I, I think I would have kept it that way, to be honest. Otherwise, I'm going to get rid of it and purge it. Um, if you really like Carcassonne, try this out. If you really want a Carcassonne variant, try this out. Uh, but for me, it's a goner. Here's Carcassonne Gold Rush. You can see the nice box. It's a regular size Carcassonne box. In it, you're going to get a rule book. Uh, if you've played Carcassonne before, this kind of rule book is going to be norm normal to you. Uh, a little bit of variance. They're very nice that they circled in blue the things that are like regular Carcassonne so you can see what is different uh, semi easily. And a little advertisement, and then the play rate at the back, which is much appreciated. You're going to get the normal little scoring board you'll get with Carcassonne. You're going to get a number of 
gold nuggets, which are made of cardboard. They have different denominations on them. Some of these give you nothing. Boo! You will get a number of meeples and tents in this one. The meeples have little cowboy hats. Of course they do, right? And you get a number of tiles. The back is what's always important to Carcassonne fans. You can see that it will not match your current stacks. And then these will have railroads and, and gold. And you can see some horses on it. Uh, same Carcassonne quality. This is what you're used to. I do like the insert, how it is very themed out. I'll show you how to play this game in just a second, but the components are very good and standard in what you're kind of used to with Carcassonne. The rules for Carcassonne Gold Rush are pretty clear. Uh, one of the things they did that was really nice was they circled in blue the areas that were exactly like the original Carcassonne. And the new rules, the, the variant rules, uh, as I call them, are not circled in blue. So you can quickly go to what you need. You know, when I get to a game like this, I get confused in my mind. So this one works this way. South Seas works like this. This, one. So I get a little flustered and I can forget the nuances of this variant sometimes. Um, that's not a fault of the rules. That's just the problem with changing two or three things in, in a game and repackaging it as a new game, I suppose. Um, so the rules are pretty clear. I think you can probably read about 15, 20 minutes, uh, especially if you've never played before. If you played before, you might just want to read 5, 10 to get the updates and see how it works together. Because it's really, at the end of the day, it's just Carcassonne. Okay, now play Carcassonne is pretty easy. This is going to be a scoreboard. You take one of your people, and he'll just go around here when you score points. There is a starter tile. I don't know where it's at, so I'm just going to start with another tile to show you kind of how this works. And I'll try to zoom in here the best I can. Whenever you place a tile, you have a few options here that you can do. Let's see if I can make some heads or tails of this. So, uh, whenever you when you play in Carcassonne, anytime you put a tile together, it always has to match. So I can never do like that or like this. So you need it to match up. Now, when you place a tile, you have a few options you can do in this game. Uh, you can place uh, a meeple on top of the road. And this one, instead of roads, you have railroads. Same difference. If you were to place this tile, I could place, whenever you have a nugget space, you put one on it. Now some of these will have spaces for multiple nuggets. Let me see if I can find this one. And you can see this one has two nuggets. So if you played this one, you would place two nuggets on it. Now what you can also do is you could place one of your people on a, on a gold mountain. Now that plays just like in regular Carcassonne when you're building the little city spaces. Okay? So you got the roads, which is going to score you a point for each tile. If it has one train, it scores you double. If it has zero or two or more, it doesn't score you the double. Um, when you close a gold mine, you get all of the tokens not put on it. Now, instead of putting a person on that, if you were blue, you could also put a tent on it. And what a tent's going to allow you to do is that if you place a tile and you don't put a worker out, you can take one of these tokens. Now, they will score you this many victory points at the end of the game. This one gives you two. Okay, and some of them will give you all the way up to five, and you have this clunker that doesn't score you any points. In addition, you can also do the farmer that you can do in other ones where you'll put this guy down and you will connect teepees. Can you see that? You get two points for every teepee and four points for every horse. So let's just say this was a legal move and I put this guy here. You can't really see what I did there, can you? And this guy ends up here. I would at the end of the game, if the game ended like this, I would get four and six because they're connected. Now, when you're connecting this, um, railroads will always block it. So something over on this side will be blocked by this railroad, but it will go all the way up through this side. So mountains and gold mines can also block it. And that's really how you're going to score the points. You're going to score it for the railroads, 
You're going to score it for the fields with the horses and the teepees. You're going to score for the mountains and the gold dig. And the last way are these cities. So if you get one of these cities, they're normally going to have three railroads out. If all three railroads, these kind of work like cloisters. So if all three railroads are locked, that means you fulfilled it to get to the next stop. You will get nine points for having a person on this. And that's where the difference is between uh, Carcassonne Gold Rush. I mean, it's pretty much going to work the same way as normal Carcassonne. We're going to be building this out. Um, but the scoring is just a hair different. And this gold mine is going to be the big difference. The, the city is going to work like the cloisters. The railroads are going to work like the roads, except for the doubler with if you have just one train. Um, and but then the gold mines go, and the tents going to work a little bit differently. So it's still draw a tile, play a tile, and you may place a meeple if you like. So same classic Carcassonne that you're used to. Who should buy this game? I'm going to say this game is for you know somebody who might go to the Target and never play Carcassonne and wants to try one out. You know, and they don't want the expansions, and it's, they like the Old West, and, and they'll purchase this game and be happy. Uh, this is also for people who have to have everything that's Carcassonne. This might be a good way to go. Um, if you like Carcassonne and just want one box, you don't want the expansions, and you you know, you know just want a standalone game, this isn't a bad one to get. It's a little heavier than some of the other ones, <clears throat> which can be a plus for some people. And it has the Old West theme, which is going to attract some people. Otherwise, I mean, I don't know why somebody would just stick with the original and maybe pick up an expansion or two. So, for me, it's going to be a purge, and you're going to know instantly whether this is for you or not. This actually, you know, what I'm sitting here thinking about, this might actually be a good gift for somebody. Somebody who doesn't game, maybe their family likes to play Monopoly or Life or something, this might be a good version to give them. They might enjoy this quite a bit. So, Carcassonne Gold Rush is a purge.